Hello, everybody, and welcome to another squad cast. As you guys might see, there's a new face here today. Today, we're joined by the seasonal champion, Trevo. Trevo, congratulations on your seasonal champion win, and thank you so much for joining us today. Gentlemen, the rest of you, plebeians. Plebeians. Even your prodigy. Yeah, I was you about to say. It doesn't count anymore. <laughs> doesn't count anymore. Yeah. How are you all doing today? Good. Yeah, yeah we're doing yeah, great. Good. The expansion, yeah. man. It is Insp expansion day. You guys have you guys had an opportunity to play much yet? I've I've been jamming a bit. everything. Um, it's yeah, it's just a wild 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 west, you know. <laughs> I've been doing nothing but trying to make hallowed NASA's work. No man, just play Viego. Just play Viego. Yeah, this is NASA's I'm, thing. Why do you? Keep I'm doing it this? that right now. <laughs> Because Nasus is fun. I like fun. I like throwing big units at your face, but I like <laughs> it to be at least somewhat fair where I have to like work for it, you know? I just like that it's a dog. It's, like... it's a good dog. He's a good dog. Susie is a good dog. She's the best dog. <laughs> good old Susan. Dude, you're saying all these things about Nasus, and it's just like, Viego does all this, but better. Oh, yeah, yeah Viego's true. definitely the better deck, sure. but like... It's less fun. But yeah, Diego doesn't have a dog. Fun? What's yeah. that, man? I don't, I don't yeah. know that <laughs> concept. What? What's that? I don't know. You, you almost brought some fun decks to the seasonal tree, though. I know you were panicking. Playing, to playing get games yeah, right. together. Do you wanna? Yeah, like. Do you wanna talk to the viewers a little bit about your seasonal championship and your run, the days leading up to it, how you were feeling? Like one week before the the Swiss rounds, I did it. I only had one deck. And I was saying on the Wombat's Discord, like, okay, guys, I want to play this season. I don't want to play it. Like, I, I feel like, even though I have the seeding to 7-2, I, I, I will screw this up. I don't have a lineup. I don't feel prepped. So, like, and on Sunday, uh, Sujurkon, he, he was talking, like, he talked the whole season about the freaking Bard Vi deck that he was way better than Winding Light and would win the match into Winding Light. And I was like, hmm, okay. And just ignored him. And in a, a moment, like <laughs> Lazy Guga, he said he was playing ladder, trying to get some some LP. And he faced Sudrakon on his Murph playing that Vibard, and he just kept losing the Winding Light matchup. And he was like, "Okay, this this might be worth testing." And then he started testing, and deck was broken apparently. Even though you guys didn't see it in the NA broadcast, deck was real good uh, and did really well on the Swiss. But like, even though on like Wednesday, I didn't have the third deck. I was like, I either play Trolls or Scouts, and I, I'm dog shit with both, and I don't know how to play both, but they looked a better one. The, so, and and then on Wednesday, I think, a random, he made a write-up about some matchups on Heimer Jace, and I was like, okay, let's, let's give it a try. And like one month earlier, I was playing in the Kingdom League for Wombats, and I played that deck. And I was like, after the the O four I did, I was say I said like, no, I'm never touching this again. This deck's dog shit. I, I'll never play it. And then I just won seasonals with it. So life turns around real fast. But yeah, the lineup was pretty good. The the most important thing was like not screwing up my games, having luck, and I don't know, having some good good vibes. I always like singing and dancing on the BR broadcast and cam. I don't know if you guys saw it, but like. Some gifts came out of that, so it was a pretty good run. Uh, I didn't get a chance to catch any of that myself. It's too bad. I'll have to, I'll have to go look for them. Um, how do you feel about the seasonal weekend being condensed into one, as opposed to the way we used to have it with two weekends? Do you think there's a reduced prep? Do you think the reduced prep time brings out the better player? Do you think it increases variance? How do you feel about it? Like, this is better for who prepped most for the open rounds, you know? Because you you basically just got to keep up with the prep you had for Saturday because you don't have enough time to prep. You're already tired and it's already real late for... For, like, in Brazil, it's, like, midnight when the, the th open rounds end. So, like, yeah, I'm going to bed and is going to play the decks I have. Uh, and I, I think it's real good because... The last time I got super scouted by Tomazano, he just crushed me with a counter lineup of the one that I played on Operons. And like, if I 
had the whole season to prep a lineup. I don't think I'm changing the lineup in one week. You know, I don't have enough time to, and like trying to make that detective thing with my opponent. Like, oh, I'm changing my lineup, and he says, oh, I'm changing my lineup as well, and everyone changes and changes again, and this way it's way better. Like, I I knew who I was facing like ten minutes before uh, the game on Riot Suite, so I, I think it was better because. It's more like a magic Grand Prix and stuff like that, you know? Because it's one day after the other and makes more sense for me as an event. Even though we don't have that uh, week of glory that we used to have, you know, do some wisdom interviews and stuff like that. We don't have that anymore, but uh, yeah, for me it was worth it. Yeah, okay. Uh, do the rest of you guys have any questions, sir? Any, anything to say to Trebo about his tournament run? Any, any comments about the seasonal oh, tournament this time around? Okay, so we... The game you had versus Drizoth, right? That Aphelios Winding Light Mirror? You played it very well, but like that game, you hit a, like, a crazy top deck that just like blew open the game. You played it perfectly, like layering the aft to get around the Gravitum and everything, but like I don't think you can win that game without the top deck Aphelios. Was that the craziest thing that happened for your seasonals run, or was there like a bigger highlight you have because that was the craziest thing i think we saw besides the like winter's breath of course but like yeah is the, is there like another thing better like the winter's breath thing comes to mind like and because it was an anomaly that was a fresh yeah. brilliant so that was kind of super rng and i was already behind in that game because my opponent just like i was playing the mirror and my opponent drew like five champions so it was like having a real gar- hard time keeping up with the pace that he had. Uh, but the Drizov match and the Princess Liz match, the, the one on top 16, were the mm-hmm. ones that were real hard. Because, like, on top 32, I was kind of confident because my opponent had the decks I wanted to play against, and I just, like, too old, pretty okay. But on the top 16, pre-match was the match that was, like, real scared. Because my best match was like 40% to me. I had like all bad matchups all over my, my board. And I was like, okay, I'm in a good situation. Because if I lose, it's fine. Because I shouldn't win. And if I win, I'm like the hero. The Brazilian hero and stuff like that. So yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> uh, so I ended up winning. And had some some luck in the games for sure. Because turning around matchups like that, you need like to play okay and have some luck. But the Drizov match was real hard because it was the the time that I said, okay, I might, this dude might play better than me, uh, and I might not be able to just kill my way out, so I'm going to have to have a little bit of luck and try to hit the right matchups. And that mirror was like the moment I was uh, on like turn four, and my hand was like double winding light, double chompers. I, I noticed that I needed some god thing. To, to happen like some get excited so I started playing for burn and direct damage because the take that I'm, I've been saying since the beginning is that guys play start shaping sometimes like because people don't have heal anymore they are too severum dependent on that deck so it was like every pharaohs I had I was like okay insta shock plus or insta true shock barrage because a lot of damage could come through and they could, wouldn't have any healing ways so I played for that top deck Thanks God I, I top decked it and like after mm-hmm. such a hard mirror match, I, game three was like way easier because I had a better matchup and I think I played like pretty okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense too with how you were saying about um, people being so Severum dependent. Like you held that Gravitum in your hand for like a really long time just waiting for like, okay, he's going to have to play Severum and then I just remove that and that's, you know, how I'm going to make sure I get there on burn. Uh, how much do you, like, change your prep for open rounds versus top cut? Like, how much... How does the mentality change for, like, which decks you choose to bring to open rounds versus top cut? So, like, uh, after being friends with Black Boss that, like, topped the seasonal five, six times, he, like, the four, f- first four times he topped, he just lost on top 32 or 16. And then the fifth time, he won it all. And we ended up, like, um, noticing that you needed a lot of luck and you need to not be scouted and this way like i talked before is way better so it's harder to scout people because you don't know who you're playing 
and you're already tired during the night so it's hard to prep for the games uh, I was just like if I said I can play nine rounds with this lineup I can play five rounds with this like sometimes it's hard because uh, you play the lineup like my lineup wasn't the best decks you know it was just some decks that I thought was they were smooth they were hard to break and they could have some uh, skill play possibilities to me to to do during the open round so that was uh, good moving on to the top cut so I was real co uh, confident because uh, my idea as a lineup was to be good into a failures and like if you're coming to people would either try to beat a failures or be on a failures so I would like just kind of play high mirror mirrors or stuff like that or play a uh, failures mirrors which I I like I was really super confident playing so it was I think it was okay Yeah, you're a long time Aphelios player, right? Like, you used to play him, like, way, way back. So, like, I'm sure you feel really good, like, anytime, just, like, skill dipping the mirror. Yeah, I remember, like, the, the meta that Aphelios came out. I was, like, I think the top two or three player that I used to play the deck. I had, like, 300, 400, 500 games, something like that. Because I remember I played, like, four hours a day, five days a week for, like, two the two months of the season like non-stop because I was streaming all my games so I had a lot of repetitions on the failures as a champion so yeah all right well that uh I guess that'll take red wrap it up for the seasonal chat for the time being but we did also just get the new expansion today. Gentlemen, what have you guys had the opportunity to play? What have you been getting into? I myself have played a little bit of... Not much. I played a, a little bit of Yeti memes. I played a little bit of Zero Relia, And I played a little bit of uh, Prodigy's Evelyn Lucian deck. Which I thought was pretty solid. So, I haven't gone to really play with anything yet unfortunately i ended up traveling most of the day today uh but i have watched some people play some things and gwen looks pretty good like just she's a like she's an evasive unit she's hard to deal with like for health it's not the hardest thing to remove but it's not easy it's definitely not easy like three damage removal is like pretty easy but four you know four is not so that plus the drain just makes her pretty resilient and hollowed is like it's a pretty solid keyword uh it's like the value does a lot and the units you're playing to like give hollowed aren't bad um kaisa and evelyn seem solid but they are a lot trickier to figure out um they can definitely do powerful things but like I'm not really scared when a Kaiser or Evelyn drops all the time, but I'm scared when I've seen a Gwen drop, like, every time. Um, that would be my take. Also, there's a few of the other uh, cards that came out that have been, like, pretty impressive. Like, Sneezy. That card slaps. Yeah. Are you Sneezy. putting in as, like, a Sneezy fourth and Bigel fifth dust. yours and arms, or... Like, is it... You don't I think, I think it's almost arms. better because, like, it's burst, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, the, you don't need your dozen arms. Yeah, you, you don't have to play like multi region. You don't have to play fizz. Are you running like it's, the same some like crazy stuff? PNZ with like owl cats and chompers and fours? Uh, I don't think you play owl cats. Okay. I think you just play like fours and chompers. Pharaohs, conch, fours, chompers. P Tash, yeah. I think already got diamond with it. I yeah, I, I've I've been watching P Tash play. He's yeah. been going crazy. Yeah, I I did manage to beat him with scion but it was a close one mm -hmm. yeah. and scion's supposed to be like a pretty solid matchup against yaya it is like yeah. even when yaya was full power scion like had a bit of an edge so like the fact that you know it was a hard time really yeah. i think shows the strength of that deck yeah it's definitely back um the scrap heap card from for scion is pretty good too though now you can discard extra scions for like Farron or for leviathan um, yeah. which is really nice yeah so you don't need that card is sweet. yeah you don't need to run Farron anymore which is good nice dude I'm, I'm checking out these builds all the cards look so cringe man like do we want to play this again 
I don't know. Yeah, that's what I thought, and then I played against it, and it kind of rolled me pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Kaisa. Kaisa, that's that's good stuff. That's Kaisa's good. good. Yeah, Kaisa's fun. Yeah. How have you been having success with Kaisa? Like, almost so, every build of Kaisa I've seen has been a little bit awkward. I would say. So I played a lot of it today. I had decent success with different builds. I'm playing Watamai's version right now, and that that feels really good. It's it's Octron Kaisa. Um, yeah. Wait, are you running Demacia as well? Yep, rallies, challengers, all that good stuff. Quick attack. Oh, I, I've been playing um, with, with PNZ, like basically a, a winding light slash bard vibe build. Yeah. Like, like Victor is broken with her. If you manage to get both champions uh, on the board, you just win. Yeah. And like, and like you just play full aggro and stuff like that. That feels good, but. It's going to be hard to find some good builds for tournaments with these yeah. champions because they seem to pair up well with champions that we are already using in other decks. So, I I don't like the PNZ just because it's like so weak to removal, um, and like you have to drop both champions, which like also feels really rough. Like, are you playing a bunch of right of callings to like get those? Um, yeah, I've tried a few things. Um, I messed around with like Mono Kaisa. That felt pretty decent, um, right? Because you you can draw Kaisa every single game. Um, so like the builds I've seen and the builds I've playing is like basically a discard target discard aggro yeah. with the champion. So like, because yeah. because the PNZ package is still broken and they didn't change anything up, so we can still abuse that package and put stuff like because they already have to deal with the baboons, the some treasures. And this way you can play merciless hunter. That's still a very very yeah. good card. So. She's good. I just feel like the the PNZ stuff is getting a little bit outclassed right now because we have Gwen running around. So Gwen is like, um, yeah, Gwen is like healing everything that you do, um, and then because of that, you have a lot of people like on Evelyn stuff, which is just like swarm and go wide. So like Eve Eve Evelyn Demacia is also giving you trouble, um, and like my Eve Demacia is on, on like triple concerted strike, um, and I just I feel like waiting for your Victor to roll all the keywords and then for your Kaisa to like hit them, it just feels a little bit inconsistent. Um, that's just like my feel like every time i run into a, a kaisa like if it's i haven't lost a pnz yet i've lost like i beat every pnz kaisa i've run into and the demasi ones and the evelyn ones have been giving me more more problems just because they like they high roll harder um it feels like i don't know so like kaisa victor sounds good and all and i like the idea and it makes sense right uh for like the keywords and when, when they're both on field at the same time it's really strong but i think just like more realistically there is a good style of that type of deck, but it's probably just like Victor by Supercharge. Just like discard aggro type deck. Yeah. Like I would just think it's more consistent and then you don't have to lean into like the evolve package as much and you can kind of just play the game a lot more with one champ. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. The big I advantage is pretty good. Though. The big advantage is the abomination is like your late game, right? It's like a built an arsenal. Yeah. And so you mm -hmm. just get to like play that and win the game. Um, I think there might be a cool deck that's like pretty much just Void Abomination win con and a lot of like fun stall. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't know. You definitely see that coming together. A lot of the decks seems to just like, games just getting faster and faster, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I think just play for the stall might be weird sometimes. Yeah. Playing for awkward. turn 8, turn 9 in 2022. Yeah, I want like, to though, but I want to. I was done with Abomination. I was talking with other VR players and said like, "Okay, this this card is like the Avengers. He's the last defense into evil. You know, like he's the <laughs> last guy we, we will play." Yeah, no, I I agree with a lot of that. Like he's a bit slow and like he's a bit awkward. Like there will definitely be like a time where he's insane because you know the game stalls out and he comes down as like this Abomination, but like. If you're playing this card when you're barely holding on to the game, which is probably going to be how it is a lot of the time if the game goes late enough to play him, he's not going to be that impactful. Makes sense. Next more time. I've been playing nothing but Gwen, so. Gwen is really strong. That yeah, infinite Gwen. combo is really something else. That, because yeah. been at the mercy of that quite yet. 
Yeah, it's it's a little inconsistent, but my Gwen's not been great because I keep pairing her with Nasus and it's not. I, I it's played not uh, Gwen and Laoi. Like those two package seems to like work okay with each other because you can buff the Tentacle, which buffs the Laoi, which and the Tentacle also buffs the Gwen if you manage to have both on board. So oh, I like yeah. the. The deck lacks a little bit of extra draw because of the region combination. Because like even though you you can have access to glimpse and stuff like that, like all your units look a little bit important or a little bit too fragile because all the other units have like one health only. So, but I also try to get the glimpse in the deck. So, you might be able to pick that with like fortune croaker or something. Yeah, that's a good idea. I could try. Yeah. I've played nothing but a brand new infinite deck. Nice. So what's that? That's the sixth drop one. Generous. The sixth drop one. Yeah, the the si Eternal yeah. Dancers. You yeah, buff so it to four, th and then you summon mm -hmm. Ruin Reckoner or level two Katarina, and you just chain that. Yeah, you know, like you can do the yeah, yeah, because she does that into the other one, into the other one forever, like. Not forever, like 15 times, because we can only do it 15 times. Uh, technically, well, yeah, with Katarina, but... you can do it infinitely, because you're not playing any cards. You're just prior. attacking, and then Katarina summons you Rally. So you're never playing any cards, so you don't have the 15-card gap. That's, <laughs> That's kind really of scary. Funny. That's but it's funny. unnecessary. You don't need to do it 15 times. You need to do it like four times, and you got it. Yeah, cause like I I faced a guy that tried to do that, and I didn't notice it was like infinite. I just killed the reckoner before he could do anything, so yeah. I didn't see the end of it. But like now that I know that, I'm happy I killed the the reckoner. <laughs> this is very much. It's not. Yeah, it's it's a it's not a real. It's a day infinite. one That's deck be, where like, when you don't know what's going on, you can you'll just play into it. Once you understand it, like I played some game. They like super cool star chart into an equinox in like turn three to get ready for me. They were just waiting the entire game. It felt awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We gotta remember that the old decks is still around. Like people are not playing them, and they still broken. So we we gotta like in two two to three days. Everything that we we're talking here might be dog shit. So that's kind of. <laughs> I think that all three Enjoy champions it. have are gonna find a place in the meta. I hope so. I really hope, I hope so. so. Except maybe yeah. Evelyn. I, I think they're not that. quite as strong as some of the top decks prior, but I think they're strong enough to like find their own place. Yeah, but even like, more when like they, they kill the decks that were good last meta, they probably might just be tier 1s after that. Like, I don't think they're beating current... If you're playing Thralls or Winding on Ladder, I think you're still probably better. Like, you're not like losing necessarily. It's not like an awful matchup, but I think you're probably still better than like all the new champions. I think Winding Light's still the best deck. Yeah. Almost certainly. Yeah. At least for the next week, give people some time to come up with something. Yeah. Like, we... if they don't nerf Pharos, I'm, I'm gonna be sad. Like, because they ended up nerfing the tree because of Lazy Guga. So, like, if they don't ner nerf Pharos because of me, I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> Can we unnerf tree already? Oh my god. No, no, no. I don't, that no. deck is not I'm good. Oh, don't you like, know it's Landmarks tree Evelyn. can't win the game. No, and really. Mike's can't win the game. Prodigy, you have to build Tree right. Evelyn. It's yeah, but, but we, but me and Tank were working like... on it. We would have built it if, if they hadn't nerfed it to the ground. Trust me. But like, well, what, you can still build tree, it with popping you. Tree would not be a problem now if we revert it. Like, you think the game goes to turn nine? Well, honestly, every region has landmark removal and tell stones. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, that's there's true. no reason Tree. So is a problem yeah, right exactly. Now. Like, so we don't unnerf it. So, like, so here's the question: the If we nerfed it, <laughs> will we put it to five or to six, which they briefly nerfed it to? That's seven. <laughs> seven. <laughs> to seven. I hate I hate this kind of like non uh, like because Rune Tower is a attraction game, like because you trade boards and stuff like that. You try to trade resources, and every deck that doesn't do that, I'm kind of like, oh, why? What are you doing this in this game? You know. Azir, Aurelia, Ari Cannon, all that deck stuff. They should go to hell and never come back, you know? No, these are the best decks for <laughs> <in my opinion. laughs> 
Ionia? Yeah, I agree Wait. with you. I agree with you, Trevo. Right. I right, agree but, with you. But, but you can't say that and be an Aphelios player. You have to admit. I know. Yeah. Yes, you can. No. Yeah. no, no, no. Aphelios like can I said, go die. Aphelios <laughs> is exactly that, but he's like too much of that. That's it. Like the way that, the way that he does things, it's fine. But like not how, how, how many times he does that in a turn. That's not yeah. fine, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because be, like uh, you stop you stop playing your hand and you start playing a failure's hand and just keep on. That's the problem. Yeah, failure should be two HP. Like why is why is why is he better than Draven? Like why is he infinitely better than Draven? Yeah, why, are no, why are we nerfing? Why are we why are we nerfing a and not buffing Draven? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... <laughs> now you can do both. You can, it's the both and you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you buff Draven, I won't accept that. <laughs> okay. Well, the season is super, super short, eh, guys? Mm -hmm. It's only like what five weeks? Yep. Uh, yeah, oh god! Days? Days? Exactly, so exactly. Five days. Days. <laughs> so when's our balance exactly patch? Wow. Probably uh, tomorrow. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, it's, 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 on, it's yeah. on the tree. Yeah. On, on August 3. 3 August. Mm -hmm. Alright. And patch notes on 2. Right. Like that's seasonal, actually... Yeah, that's cool. Seasonal is on got... 27 and 28. And the new season is on 31. So we've got 3 Sick. weeks I'm of done seasonal with that. patch. That's fine. Yeah. 3 weeks is yeah. enough, I think. I, I yeah. think 3 yeah, like, weeks is a really nice amount. Because I think the yeah. meta settles a lot in that last week. Like, a lot. Yeah. Because, like, la this time we had two weeks, and people were, like, playing Action the Papercraft, thinking that that deck was good. Like It was. But... Yeah, Action the Papercraft is good. Action the Papercraft no, was insanely good. The deck, the deck is horrible. The deck was dog no. shit. You're well, crazy. No. With it. What are you talking about? Like, You're crazy. If, if it wasn't, if yeah, it wasn't for Action cool. Papercraft, I wouldn't top seasonal. Like, I farmed that deck all along. It's because, like... The play of the deck, it's only one play, and like, it's older than walking forward, you know? Everyone knows what's, what you're going to do. You just have that play to win. You cannot win in another way. It's not like, like a failure so, way. Yeah. Yes, however, the, most I'll, of the decks couldn't cannot, deal with that. Yeah. You could show yeah, them what you're going the to do. Yeah, that's the reason it was good. And what are you doing you're as just, Akshan, or what are you doing as Aphelios? Yeah. How are you stopping me as Aphelios? Uh, Aphelios wins that matchup. Yeah, yeah, that, oh. sure. that, that's, yeah, that's sure. That's yeah, that's actually reasons, not the best like, example. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's because like all the decks I played had good matchups into that, because all the good decks I played, all the decks I played were good. That's my. That's the way I think. It's like if you cannot so, interact with a freaking well, overwhelm double attack unit, where what are you doing? You know, like what, also, what like, here, 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 Okay, so like, here's what I'll say about this. Has a like, freeze. You should think this is a good matchup. You have a freeze. They're going on even one unit. That was not a simple matchup for thralls. You need to prepare for what they're doing a few turns ahead to get rid of the spell shield and then freeze them. I also think thralls was bad, but like, that's what? My wow, you have okay. some oh, hot takes. Because like, what's good? Oh, I don't believe okay. in non-fluid decks. You know, decks that don't like because you play thralls, you don't draw the thrall, you're dead. And like, mm. I did the math, and it is like one into f twenty-five. Like, you should brick in 1 into 25 games, okay? With trolls, right? I played 5 games, I bricked in all of them in a row. So, like, for me, the deck's dog shit. Just draw better. <laughs> so, like, here, here's what I'll say. Yeah, like, you have I, to be I a really like good thrall. As, as someone who, like, is very... Like, I'm a bit more familiar with these decks. I'm pretty... Like, I play a lot of thralls, and uh, I talk to Loser a lot, who unfortunately isn't here, but I think he's probably the best papercraft player on the server. Like, he's really familiar with this deck. And I think these decks are a lot more fluid than you're giving them credit for. Yeah. Um, yeah. They tend to be very linear, and they have one main game plan they really want to do. And uh, you do gain a lot of points, especially against players who aren't super familiar with their decks, when you can stop their main game plan, which is what you were doing, and you were doing it very well. But when you play against really good players on this deck, they yeah. really know how to play around that and to like, pressure you. Like, when I watch Loser play the Heimer Jace matchup, he's never just going like, all right, Overwhelm Papercraft, I kill you. He's playing Merciless Hunters. He's working on Akshan Horde. He's going to be like, okay, I'll play this value game. I'm going for Merciless Chip. I'm trying to interact with your champions. 
and making it like just as awkward for you to play the game as it is for him to play the game because you're good at stopping his core game plan. Yeah, it doesn't um, have to win on like six. But seven. I, I don't uh, like I 100% believe what you're saying about like it's just players walking forward into you is what happened at seasonals and this is why you're the seasonal yeah. champ. But not everyone can play the deck to its full potential, right? Yeah. And I think when you play against someone like that, there's a lot more game and a lot more play there. It makes a lot of sense, to be honest. But yeah. Like, the problem is that, uh, like, it's stats and win rate on ladder didn't make any sense. Like, stuff like that, you know? Yeah. It was very inflated. inflated. Yeah. 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 Like, according to stats... Akshan Renekton had literally no bad matchups. Like, yeah, it, it was, was a tier zero deck. Bring stats, <laughs> like, must bring it's deck. not a tier zero deck. Yeah. Like, it was like the best deck the game's ever seen, according to, to ladder stats. Yeah. Yeah, it's because it's because we didn't have like three weeks. You only had two, and then people couldn't like bring that to a big tournament or something like that. Just prove the deck was bad. You know? Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. like, same with uh, Bardalawi, too, right? The stats on that were pretty. Uh... Inflated, I think. Yeah, I, I brought Bard Vibe, really man. The deck doesn't even exist, you know? Like, some <laughs> True. wild things were dead. True. Winning the seasonal with a deck that's not even on the stats. Is that a first-time accomplishment? <laughs> For sure. Like, the last time I, I went, like, did a good, decent run. I also did with that, that with, like, Sivir TF. That was a deck that only me, Chekhov, and another dude that I don't remember the name. Because he, like, dropped the game a long time ago. Uh, were playing. And for me, Super TF is the best deck in the game that no one ever played. Like, the best, un, like, unseen gem, you know? I'm sure there's a lot of those. <laughs> yeah, because we don't but see them. <laughs> That's the yeah, Super <laughs> TF was a good one for sure. Silver TF. TF was definitely a good one. Yeah, Silver TF's not a bad deck. Like, honestly, every season, Chekhov posts a new list and he gets like 200 LP with it. Dude, like, the every single great, season I talk bad. with Sh- Dr. Chekhov, like, yo, how's our deck going, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> guy's the homie. I like Chekhov a lot. He's a nice guy. He's a great guy. For sure. That's. Anybody seen anything super exciting, super spicy yeah, gotta, on ladder? We gotta talk more new fun decks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I've been really struggling. Like, I don't know. I feel like pre-release season just kills the hype around expansion day. Yeah. And I like, like the, pre- yeah. the early access, I'm really not a fan of, to be Same. honest. That's a good thing, cause hey, buddy. we in Brazil we had problems with the email, so they didn't send early access to us. So sick. Yeah. Everything's Great. new to me. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I think um, Kais is the most fun for me. Kais is like exactly what I like. Okay, why don't you Sharima, which you guys know I love Sharima. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this guy likes Sharima. Good point. My Good God. point, man. So uh, I like sh- I get to play a Shurima, another Sharima champion in my you know triple Sharima lineup. Um, so that's great. Um, yeah, and I don't know. She's just like she's just a combo finisher. Like I, I love these like Ziggs, Talia, these um, mm-hmm. Arsenal kind of like you play this game plan and then you like build up to a point where you win the game. Um, so I love Kaisa. Um, I will mess around with Evelyn and Gwen at some point. I played a little bit of Evelyn. Um, she's with very Kaisa. Good. <laughs> no, I played a uh, Evelyn Lucian. I, I built that one. Oh, I see. Um, and then How's I that going? passed. It's pretty good. My teammates that are deck, like, that deck is good. Yeah. I, I built yeah. it and then shipped it. It's tricky. I, yeah, it's very tricky. I built it, shipped it and then let other people like have fun with it. Cause it, I'll play it at some point, but uh, I'm more of a deck builder, so I'm just trying to figure out all the broken stuff, and then I'm going to keep one or two pocket decks for me um, for when I need to make that, you know, that, that ranked climb. So, yeah. But it's it's a good time. Gwen is Gwen is just strong. Gwen is, like, good in any anything Gwen anywhere. Gwen is so good. There's a lot of shells for her that exist. And Gwen, a lot of Gwen Viego is really good. Decent. Gwen Spiders is really good. Her package oh. is so flexible. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I know. Hollowed is awesome. I really just, like, wish I could put them in more decks. Like, I just, like, I want to level up all those champions that are just, like, stat checks. Dude, you gotta stop with the Nasus thing, man, so you can, like, enjoy <laughs> really No, but, well. like, there's, like, <laughs> I've been because like Gwen Viego is a real deck. I think that deck's actually good. I don't think it's better than Mono Viego. I just because uh, I think Mono. I just really hope that the good know. Gwen deck doesn't no end idea. up being Gwen Ionia elusive spam. 
Yes. It, anything it, it might. It might I be. Know. Very I don't good. want I know it to it be. Will it will be, probably be. But I don't want it to be because it's. We already have we'll that. Probably we have hard buffs. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I like weirdly because like I was messing around with Gwen Viego and I pretty much came to the conclusion that Gwen Viego is better without Gwen. You just put all the hollowed cards in and you run those to turbo level Viego. Oh. That's but you still have take. the consistency of always hitting Viego. That's, That's a good thing. I like that. I said Gwen Viego is really interesting because there's like a reason to play a second champ in that, right? Because I don't know if you guys know Garrett, but like he's a huge mm -hmm. friend of mine. And he has that awesome a lot of takes when this time of the season comes up. And he said, like, day one, not even had like played like more than three or five hours of the game. He said, I'm almost sure. Gwen decks are going to cut Gwen at some point. And I was like, what? I can that, see that Yeah, right And now. like Gwen's so good too, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty confident that the like the hollowed cards in Viego's shell are better than putting Gwen there. You just need Viego so much yeah. that like the, running The problem with so hollowed rough. is that it's forever, man. And like forever in the game and the buff is there. That's like good. I don't know. It's good design because... It might be competitive for a long time, you know, in the way, because it's really hard yeah, to interact with the buff. Yeah. Hollow's, like, Hollow's my favorite thing they've printed this set. The, like, I, Gwen package is my favorite. I just want to say how good, like, the Gwen package is for the overall health of, like, SI as a region, because it does sure. two things the region really needed. First of all, it gives you, like, a 2-1 you cannot hate yourself playing in your deck. So, like... <laughs> Now as that's I really important aggro which is like really good and the second yeah. thing is like si didn't have like they had one good generic champion it was elise right and elise is good in smork decks uh pretty solid in tempo decks and good in control decks but like if you want to play mid-range si you didn't really have a champ unless you really went hard <laughs> into some sort of synergy but gwen is just this good champ that comes down is a base of kind of hard to deal with which is like yeah. really helps you when trying to build decks in that region because like it's hard to not run champions because there's just like no good champs and like if you're doing that to your deck your deck's probably bad so Gwen is just gonna help these decks a lot i think that's really that, good for shadow isles that drain feels so good to play with yeah i gotta i gotta so take good. here because like we have uh this uh kind of podcast in brazil that we do in victor caps uh, channel and he was like when is going to broke uh to make brown broken again you know stuff like that because <laughs> we remember okay. the one attack thing imagine five attack thing forever <laughs> just pull in front of everything I i'm going to test yeah. that that's going to be Dude, good. This, like brown and this, brown went i don't know more control more mid rangey has some this is the season of Braum, dude. He has Kaisa synergy. He has Gwen synergy. Like this is Braum season. Y'all ain't yeah. ready. <laughs> <For sure>. I <laughs> hope, honestly. <laughs> True. I remember. I remember <laughs> once I had the, the the guts to to bring a Poro Braum to OS because I wanted to make like a <laughs> tempo mid range stuff, and I ended up like top eighting that. So like, has some potential, man. I'm down for Braum to be good. I'm okay with that. I good if Braum is good, I will be scared. Oh I'll yeah, be very very scared. It's it's exactly like Yasuo. Like the, he, we laugh at him. But like if his game style becomes good, we won't like we won't be okay with it. It's kind of toxic, to mm -hmm. be honest. Oh, I never want Yasuo he's, to be good. Don't worry, he's still bad. He's still awful. <laughs> oh, of course no. he is. What okay. do you mean? Okay. Yeah, has but one day you can't say that yet. I've what I've run they? into so many Yasuo Katarinas today. Uh, yeah, I've run so into them. many. They're just it's so bad. And I've lost to more than I care to admit. <laughs> 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 yeah. They just play a five mana do nothing and you yes. kill them. Well, it they, doesn't it even win you. the next it's, turn. Like it, it, it stuns it, you. It I play something. my big Kaisa and they play their big stun landmark and I'm sad. I was playing it's, it's against them. They, they, like it. they stunned my thrall. I didn't care. I just attacked them on my turn when they're not stunning me. Like. The fact that they don't stun a defensive is a huge deal. Like, you're losing yes. so oh, much yeah. tempo to spend 5 mana. And you don't recoup that by the time it's time for them to attack you again. Yeah. 
I just think about how I don't want to play Targon's Peak right now, and then I think about how, why would I ever play a five-minute Yasuo landmark when I'm not oh, yeah. playing Targon's I'm, Peak right it's, now? It's definitely not good. I'm just saying it's... It's it's something. No, it's not. It, it, it feels more okay, like, as the person who's it's getting played against, because I'm not playing it, obviously. It feels... It doesn't... Like, they always manage to find... It, they always manage to find a line where it's like... That wasn't so bad. Like, it, I don't know. Like, every time it comes down, I'm like, you know what? That wasn't the worst thing that could, like... That sounds like, generous. Oh, yeah, like, they, they draw like, like, it's, it's like, like Pleasure Barium, and it's a stun, you know? It's like, it's like you know what? And hey, then, hey, no, no. You know what? Don't don't shit variant. talk City Breaker. Yeah. That card's low-key good. Just play you cannot say that card's low-key good. Dude, that like, so in the game, okay? Yeah, City, Breaker, <laughs> City Breaker should draw Flockman, for sure. What? That's, like, that's my take for uh, forever. Yes. Hey, that'd make it good. good. Dude, it can create a that flop for all I care about. Breakers should just yeah. draw a swain. I mean, it literally puts you on a twenty-turn clock. I don't know what more yeah. you want. Yeah, so that's the interesting. Twenty-turn <laughs> clock. And that's the but they always have a song this take. Like I say, this city breaker should draw a flock since like early twenty twenty. Man, I'm like, I was like, dude, we need this flock. <laughs> that would that would help. Ooh. Oh, guys, talking okay, about, though. like, uh, Yasuo Katarina, I don't know if you guys remember Goblin, because, like, he was a huge... Uh, Which Goblin? Like, not the king one, the other one. Okay. <laughs> the one that, like, he won, like, a, a, a weekly grassroots tournament a long time the ago. The good one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With Yasuo. Like, he beat it, like, Kavira Black Boss. But that was, like, a long, to- long time ago. And I sent him the picture of the five-mana thing, and he said, okay, I'm back to this game. Like, okay, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and he, we have like a really big tournament in Brazil uh, on Patch Day. It's Lauros. So we had like a hundred person play, and he just top forward with Yasuo. So I kind of starting to believe again. Wow. That's what I Based? I don't. I don't know if I'll believe. Yeah. Giga Chat. Does uh, Jason Sational have a Yasuo build yet? Probably. Probably. Not that I see. Is he streaming? He, sh- he should. Is he a Yasuo um, player? He was playing. Yes. I know. I, yeah. Big time. Yeah, he loves Yasuo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Nope, I see Nasa Cillian. Nope. Nasa Cillian. Oh, speaking of Cillian, yeah. has oh. anyone messed around yeah, with Yeah, we gotta talk about Cillian. Because his, uh, I, his summon yeah, uh, time a, bomb seems pretty bit. good. It's an Garrett's interesting and I talked build. about Cillian a lot, yeah. but I haven't played much yet. I saw people running yeah, it in Echo Zillion with, uh, they would add, like, Preservarium to get a few more hits. That just seems wrong. But Yeah, yeah that doesn't sound right. I've been playing uh, the Shellfook uh, Zillion Zera and just like regular Zillion Zera, and it's felt pretty nice. Shellfolk? Oh, so you can get yeah, an extra it's, one? It's manifest, so you get two time bombs. Shellfolk Gaming, let's go, Shot. No, the problem, the problem back the game. You should not be allowed to play Shellfolk without a win condition. It should be a win condition. Time bombs is a win condition. <laughs> time bomb. Yeah, okay. Time bomb, no time bomb? I want to set that on this 20 turn this clock. Says the Ionia eggs player. Okay, okay. If it helps, I play Glory's Call as well, which is another manifest. Okay? Hey, That's my win con. Why? Oh, that... Are you running. Because you're running Zera? I am running Zera. And that's it? <laughs> wow, nobody reads day one Dex article by Shadox? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's literally Lucian Evelyn in there. There's there's Evelyn Maokai. Who doesn't want to try all these things? Uh, do I want to try Evelyn uh, Maokai? I do. It's pretty fun. Uh, it's a mill deck. Yeah, oh, I played, fun I played is like one not conducive to LP games. Those, and then I just started jamming Zillion. Ah. So Zillion is where we want to be for winning games, is what you're saying. It's pretty decent. I don't know if that uh, the drop the bomb card fits in there, but it's felt okay as well. I feel like that's better in a, a Ziggs to the Ep style. Mm-hmm. Shadow, I, I totally understand the point of this deck, but it's really funny to see Tricarian training pits in a deck with no five attack units. Wait, which one? This is the uh, Talib one. So like you're always yeah, rocking it, but looking at the list looks hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Imagine like a new player to like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, you put Fizz Lulu as a new day one deck? <laughs> yeah, I also put Discard Aggro with one new card. Isn't it funny? What's wrong with you? Yes, w. Have you oh, heard of wait, Discard No, I took Aggro? it out. I took it out. <laughs> yeah, Discard Aggro in 2022? That sounds pretty new. <laughs> What's Aggro? 
Yeah. Yeah. All I know is a just hard duck. <laughs> Haven't seen that in a while, man. Don't know what that is. Is Agro coming back? Does anyone have any clue about that? I hope not. It'll come back for this week. Yeah. All the. I'm sure of it. Well, yeah. Yeah. I I have no, run into true. some just like spiders players. Yeah, me yeah, too. But like they sweet. they lost pretty bad, so I don't know how that's going. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> they didn't win. <laughs> I think Skate this is already D4 playing Gwen Spider, so it's not like yeah. unplayable. Uh, Gwen Spider but... is probably a good deck. Gwen Spider is actually good. I ran yeah, into Gwen Finally Gwen Spider a second great. champion. Finally a second champion to Spider, man. Oh, yeah. It took it like Spiders two years. Okay. Two years and a half, man. Crazy. Gwen Spider is better, though, for sure. It's just you get to run three more How do you build beasts. that deck? I mean, it's just. You just play Gwen. Yeah, I'm pretty but sure it's just spiders, it. but you put Gwen in it, right? Yep. <laughs> like, it. You can you can probably fit the fearsome hollow. Yeah, yeah or, or, or the one, one drop. Two one as well. Yeah. One drop as well. Into one drop. You put um, yeah. yeah. You put some of the you put some of the yeah you put the fearsome um you put, you the, put the Gwen stuff in yeah you put the yeah, the one drop and the two drop right? right the fearsome and the, yeah, even so just the regular one. And you can go like more heavy on fearsome, so you can take advantage out of the hollow. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, we're running mist raids now. Yeah, and Twisted hey. Tree Line too, right? Miss Rays yeah, are not yeah. that bad. And Twisted Tree Line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where's James? James would be excited. <laughs> James would be excited. James is on Doom Beast spam right now. Of course he is. That's like an act. Yeah, it's like it's actually what's happening. <laughs> not even a bad call. Just put Gwen in that deck. He did. <laughs> it's of course he did. Exactly what happened. <laughs> I bet that deck's okay. I built. A version of Gwen with Vi right now, because I was like, let me just atro a big Vi into the opponent's face. That sounds fun. That does sound fun. I we'll see how it goes. That oh, sounds oh. not great, but it does sound fun. Also, Mono uh, fun is Shreem is pretty good, I think, right now. Mono Shreem is got, been got pretty some good. Some good uh, cards. Yeah. Well, like, do you guys think that the That's six yeah. mana card might be a thing in Mono Shreem? You guys think? No. no. Maybe like a one of, but it's more the two. The what's it called? A oh, right of some uh, passage. The the I resummon think that card's pretty good. Just, just yeah. Are we like resummoning Preservarium pretty much? Is that like the hit? Or yeah. Sarcophagus. Resummoning Preservarium or or sarcophagus or what's the the ancient preparation? Even Roiling Sands. I mean, it, you can al good. you can also just get your Sundisk back, right? Right. That, that that that's like the big thing. But like if yeah. they they kill it, they're killing it on like turn four, which means like you're flipping I, yeah. you're flipping a little bit late. And then you just play Sands of Time, right? I'm like, there's yeah, your like, four turns back. I'm not <laughs> sure about that one because a lot of people are going to kill your Sun Disc in between you leveling your champions. Yeah, no, 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 then no. you're done forever. No, no, no. A lot no, of people no, they will can't do that. Because... Kill it before. Yeah. Good players will kill it later. Yeah. But but the thing is, you you run Soothsayer and you run Predicts, so they yeah. can't really oh. they can never just like put it off and be like, oh, I'll deal with it eventually because you have Rite of Negation and you have Soothsayer. That's fair. Mm -hmm. And like. They have to when they when they get a window to kill it. They have to kill it because you're right. always just threatening like slam it. So if they don't kill it by four, it's probably sticking around. Um, yeah. Also, like as disc generally, unless it's getting ho code, aren't you just beating the landmark destruction most of the time? It's just like ho code generally. That is the one that yeah. like is raw. Just because Ioni has a problem. Like mm -hmm. most reason, if they're a scorcher thing, like you can kind of race them down. Um, yeah. But I think I think right of passage yeah, just. But lets you yeah yeah that. I, yeah i'd be There's interested no need to race them anymore right yeah i would um yeah i'd have to look at it because I, I i i thought about right of passage in that deck and my, my first instinct was we run almost too many landmarks to be consistent right because we have prez we have the rolling sands we have prep um we have sarcophagus and then um we have hourglass right we have five landmarks essentially mm -hmm. and then maybe our sun disc right and so we're just my concern with that was like i'm not going to get what i want most of the time or mm -hmm. like forty percent of the time potentially, and that was a little bit spooky. But I mean, you're probably um, if you need to do it to get your sun disc back, you're probably playing it early on enough that there's not that many in the pool yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, if you're using it, like prep feels bad, the vulnerable feels bad, the hourglass feels bad. The only one that feels good is like sarcophagus and, and prep. I mean, I'm in preservarium, right? Those are the yes. ones that like actually feel good. So, so the build that's going around is actually on a two a zero two zero up and two zillion. How do you I'm, feel about that? Is it just for the early game? We want I the time bombs for, for board wiping? 
Is yeah, that's for everything pretty much, right? It makes for sense. For board wiping, it's for predict, it's for the rite of passage. Yeah, I mean, time bombs are good at, like, clearing boards. With Evelyn being running around, like, it, it seems like it's probably decent there, right? I'm not sure if you want to um, sack your consistency. Yeah. I don't think time bombs I, I would are be good enough, hesitant. Though. Yeah, I mean, I guess the only thing I can justify it, right, is, like, you flip Zerat. I mean, you sorry, you flip, you flip Zillion, and then he becomes a win condition, right? Because, like, flip Zillion can, like, win you games. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. that I love that. I have to play it. Um, it just depends. Like you, if you were gonna play Zillion, you'd build it in a different way, right? You'd lean more into like a couple of champ draw cards. And um, I feel I like know. you'd still want to be on like three Zerath though. Yeah. Even if you're trying to. Yeah, you'd want to be on three read. Zerath for sure. I think you'd have to be like three, two, one. That's what I'd be thinking. Zerath is so important yes. for like. Those layer turns, even if you don't have Sundust Flip, it helps you stabilize so yeah. well. Well, if you're gonna play all the the um, time bombs, yeah. you want Zerath on the on the field because that's another win condition in itself. Um, but yeah, I think time bombs are like pretty reasonable right now because a lot of things do have one HP, um, and with with Zerath, right, you shoot all the little guys and then you kill whatever's left over. Um, that's why Zillion Zerath, I think, I think Zillion Zerath is like also pretty viable right now. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. That's Red B. But. All right. Well, uh, it's coming up on an hour. Yeah. Close enough, anyways. Anybody else got any hot topics they want to touch on before we wrap it up for the day? No. Nah, everybody good. Well, good. <laughs> Trevo, anything you want to, any shout outs you want to give while you're here? Just want to thank you guys for inviting me. It was like real fun and I had a really good talk. So I hope to Dude. come back more times. Congrats. Yeah, well, definitely have to have you back more times. Congratulations yeah. again on your seasonal win, my friend. All right. Well, good luck, everybody, for your new patch climb. And thank you all for watching through to the end. We hope, uh, we hope you find success in the new patch. And let us know in the comments below what it is that you guys have been playing. We'll catch y'all next time.